Great Beaker, uh, born at a private nursing home with a weight of 1.1 kg. And the baby received all the things which you will uh, ever uh, read in a neonatology textbook. The baby had RDS, the baby received surfactant, the baby had mechanical ventilation for 56 hours. The baby has sepsis, the baby has apnea, the baby had NEC, which is necrotizing enterocolitis, the baby has chronic lung disease, and poor postnatal weight gain. So you can, uh, most chapters in the neurotology textbooks are covered by, uh, the baby has already covered them, and uh, the baby goes on to develop ROP stage 4, A, at 42 weeks, and the baby started, uh, uh, was treated with laser. And the baby was referred for treatment uh, with laser to the, the AIMS. Now, the question is, is, can we do something better for preterm babies? Is it necessary that all preterm babies develop ROP? Is it necessary that all preterm who develop ROP need treatment? Can we prevent them? So that essentially boils down to what is the pathogenesis of ROP. Little bit of theory, but I think that's important. And most of us, most of you definitely would know about it. Just a recap of what you have read. So when we, uh, from at in utero, at 16 weeks, the, uh, the retinal vessel starts germinating. It starts from the optic disc, and then it starts migrating towards the periphery. At 36 weeks, it reaches the nasal orosereta, and at 40 weeks, it reaches the temporal orosereta. This, this all we know. But what we uh, do not know much is the role of the various factors that help in angiogenesis or vascular genesis. So if you look at the uh, 23 weeks in neutral life, this, so it has come from 16 weeks, it has started here, and then it has reached till the here. But what are the factors that actually help in this proliferation are the uh, IGF, that's uh, insulin-like growth factor 1, vascular endothelial growth factor, and erythropoietin. So these are the factors that help in angiogenesis, and that actually helps in utero. When the baby is born at term, it actually the, uh, the vessels have reached the ovaris and the vessels are mature, and there is no scope for ROP. But what happens is when there is something in between, so there's a preterm birth, and then everything goes for a toss. Now, when you talk about ROP, there are two phases. This we should remember. There are two phases. The phase one is which usually begins immediately after birth. And that is the hyperoxic phase. And the phase two is a typical hypoxic vascular phase. This one, actually, we, the, the, the aftermath of this, that the after effects of this, that's what we are going to see. But this actually is a, a consequence of this phase one, which many times we do not recognize. In utero, the baby's the fetal saturation will be around 70%. 70 but when the baby is born, the baby has relative hyperoxia because one thing is we give supplemental oxygen and in, uh, in general, the baby's with the room air, even if the baby's on room air, the baby's saturation tends to be around 90 plus. From 70, the baby has a saturation of 90, so there is a relative hyperoxia. And if you supplement extra oxygen, then again there's a problem. And both of these hyperoxia and the supplemental oxygen are going to have a, a hyperoxic retina and that will cause reduction in the erythropoietin and the vascular endothelial growth factor. And that, that because of these two factors, the erythropoietin, the IGF and the VEGF reduces, so there is a vasoobliteration. And once this vasoobliteration occurs, and that will lead to hypoxia. So with the retina being highly, highly uh, demanding tissue, and when there is vasoobliteration, and then it, it goes on to the next phase, there is hypoxia. And this usually happens around 32 weeks. And because of this hypoxia, now the vas VEGF and the uh, erythropoietin, they, they go with the vengeance, they come back. They are suppressed, and then, uh, then they come back with vengeance, and then that, that causes the proliferation of vessels. So when, what you do in phase one, you might have to give more erythropoietin, we might have to give more VEGF. Whereas in and IGF-1, you might have to supplement. Whereas in phase 2, which we usually see, by the time it happens, actually you have to do the other way. You have to suppress the VEGF, you have to suppress the You cannot think of giving it through pointing. So this is important to understand the pathogenesis. And this is what how it is. So in phase 1, the VEGF is reduced, the erythropoietin is reduced, the IGF-1 is reduced, and that leads to vasoconstriction, and there is hypoxia, and that leads to increase VEG of increased erythropoietin and that leads to proliferation of the vessels. And that summarizes the pathogenesis of retina. So depending upon that, in this phase, you might, sub, you might consider supplementing IGF and omega-3 fatty acids. These are the experimental therapies so far, but you have to think of, about this in near future. And here, and you must have heard about anti-VEGF. So here, because VEGF is high, you can consider anti-VEGF depending upon the indication. Now, if you look at the risk factors, the prematurity and hyperoxia are the major risk factors. 
and uh, the other risk factors are fluctuations in oxygenation so that's more important it's not only hypoxia it's also about the oxygen cycles your hypoxia and hyperoxia the fluctuations blood transfusions apnea that is cessation in breathing the baby is not breathing intraventricular hemorrhage infections both intrauterine and then postnatal small for gestational age respiratory distress syndrome basically there is surfactant deficiency steroids poor postnatal growth and sickness any sickness itself is a risk factor for rop now these are the risk factors now how can we think uh, talk about prevention now prematurity is more or less not preventable if we do not have a magic bullets to prevent pre preterm births if we do that the our tribe is going to lose our job I mean, there is no, no need for neonatologist but this is not preventable luckily so for us it's not preventable but unfortunately for the babies it's not and antenatal steroids is the one in which which can help if you have an obstetric colleagues who works with you if you have pediatricians tell them to tell the obstetric colleagues to give antenatal steroids definitely it it reduces what it does is uh, we, what we mean is antenatal steroids beta methasone or dexamethasone it reduces rds that is respiratory distress syndrome and it reduces ivh shock and basically it reduces the morbidities and thereby indirectly it can reduce the retinopathy of prematurity but it can improve the survival if you don't do these things properly only by improving survival it can actually help in the number of babies having rop so you have to have antenatal steroids coupled with a proper neonatology management now hyperoxia this uh, this figure uh, uh, clearly explains the role of hyperoxia so when we uh, when the babies were dying then the neonatologists started using oxygen and when they started using oxygen the first epidemic of rop occurred and when the epidemic of rop occurred then they said okay they, then they went back the swing the, it like a pendulum it went to, to give oxygen to everybody and then they went back and said that don't give oxygen to anybody and what it happened is the rop came down but the baby started we started losing babies so then we we'll managed little bit better so titration of oxygen but what happens is now the low birth weight babies more 1 kg at at aims we save even 500 gram babies 500 600 gram babies with more and more low birth babies being saved we are seeing the second epidemic so we have to think of hyperoxia the oxygen role in a preterm babies what we can do is use pulse oximetry at birth and subsequently at, as a neonatologist or a pediatrician we have to do this and more importantly oxygen should be used as a drug it cannot be used just because you have you have free supply and the saturation should be maintained between 90 and 93 uh, nowadays they say that up to 95 low saturations people are thinking about low saturations just to reduce rop it definitely reduces rop but in preterm babies it can increase the mortality so people now now zeroed on to this saturation 90 to 95 so that's a ballpark figure for us nutrition is easily forgotten but it's one of the very uh, very important risk factor poor nutrition so early and aggressive nutrition using breast milk express breast milk is an important uh, uh, preventive strategy in Uh, level 3 and icu in a very good nicu you can always think of parental nutrition like giving lipids giving amino acids and giving vitamins and you have to always think about giving adequate calories adequate proteins and micronutrients a balanced diet for a preterm baby and of course reduce the morbidities no sepsis prevent sepsis at, at every cost have a protocolized approach avoid iatrogenesis don't give uh, fluctuations in saturation and rational use of blood products don't give blood products so frequently and prevention goes without saying you need a, a good screening program a, a team of pediatricians and ophthalmologists with a standard protocol and uh, a screening uh, uh, whom to screen and when to screen you have to have a protocolized approach less than 32 weeks less than 15 grams and a babies who are little higher birth weight if they have risk factors like ventilation or sepsis and uh, went to screen usually four weeks that's a dictum at one month and uh, we have uh, with dr azad's uh, its initiative it was about 20 years we have been running this program at uh, aims and it's uh, we have a standard schedule we do the screening at the nicu we have a role specified role for the pediatrics team what it what it does the nurses and the residents they identify the eligible babies they receive the babies who have been discharged the proforma is being filled up they start the pupillary dilatation they ensure the supplies including the the uh, scleral indenter and so on and so forth they monitor during the examination and they counsel the babies and the ophthalm team they do the screening they do they decide for the subsequent examination and they of course they do the laser and 
it's the program itself is a big preventive strategy if you if you have a good collaboration with the pediatrician you can uh, you can prevent the late advance or opito larger extent and this is uh, just the data from the beginning when we started about 20 years ago but uh, any rop it's almost 20 32 we are now, now it's a much 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 lower range uh, only 11.9% of those who have been screened but this is with improving survival of bigger baby, uh, smaller babies at, at this time we might not be saving any of 1000 grams now we are saving even 500 grams so even with this the any rop is, is not increasing and possibly the laser is also not much in, the the need for laser is also not much increased thanks to our ophthalmic team i think i will stop with this any questions